It's a metal ball. But let's see if we can catch this guy. Hello friends, I'm Will Michael coming to you today from the Terre Haute property in Bethel, Connecticut. Each year, a massive amphibian migration occurs throughout the Northeast. This week, we'll hear the story of the yellow-spotted salamander, the Jefferson salamander, and the wood frog. Oh yeah. This moisture just rained, they'll be out tonight. Salamander Patrol. A warm rain on a 50 degree night in March is the final signal for a massive amphibian migration. Yellow spotted salamanders, Jefferson salamanders, and wood frogs emerge from underground and return to the same vernal pools where they were born. Now it's their turn to breed and lay eggs. All right, so we've got to check to make sure there's no salamanders on the road. Cars come flying by and too many get killed each year underneath the tires. The pavement is the most dangerous obstacle they'll face on their journey. Sadly, each year many perish underneath automobiles. Most drivers have no idea what's going on out here. But hopefully, this program will help. Now we'll follow the salamanders as they head towards an active vernal pool. A vernal pool contains water during the spring and dries up by midsummer. As we get closer, we find more and more. I've got to watch where I put my own feet, so not to step on anyone. The adults are returning to the same pool where they were born. But it's not until they enter the water that the true wonder begins. And now, for the first time, we'll explore the secret world of these remarkable amphibians. Hundreds of mouths arrive in the shallow water prior to the females. They congregate in the same area, and each one deposits a small white globule on the pool's bottom. The globule is called a spermatophore, and contains the male's genetic material. The white flecks seen here are all individual spermatophore packets. The males outnumber the females by approximately 10 to 1. When a female arrives, she must choose a packet for fertilization. Each male hopes to attract her towards his particular globule by performing a sort of underwater dance. When she chooses a mate, she actually fertilizes herself by swimming on top of the spermatophore and enveloping it inside her cloaca. Remember, we're using powerful light sources to illuminate this action. How the female sees what's going on in pitch black is still a mystery. Salamanders communicate mostly by pheromones and chemicals. You gotta realize that in pitch darkness, they can't see anything. So they're going strictly by chemical receptors and chemical signals. Sometimes I take for granted the total darkness out here. If we turn off the lights, I don't know how these guys can see anything. Here's a shot using an infrared camera specially designed to record in total darkness. We can see the salamanders swimming around like ghosts in the dark water. The sound you hear in the background is the call of the spring peeper, a small frog that shares the pool with the salamanders. We'll save their story for another episode. This unit allows me to videotape underwater. It's an underwater housing for the video camera. These knobs allow me to operate the controls from outside. 
This offers a unique look at the underwater world of all of these salamanders. As we study the yellow spotteds, we find yet another species. It's the Jefferson salamander, sharing the same pool. They're easy to tell apart. The Jefferson lacks the spots and is a uniform gray. They're under close watch by herpetologists, in layman's terms, amphibian scientists. The Jefferson is interbreeding with the blue-spotted salamander, and a hybrid species is being born. The hybrids are sterile and cannot reproduce on their own. Scientists are studying to see whether the Jefferson will breed itself into extinction or if the hybrid offspring will eventually become fertile and able to reproduce on their own. If this is the case, we'll see the formation of a new salamander species. It's evolution right here in our own backyard. The yellow spotted and Jefferson are both members of the mole salamander family. Like moles, they live deep underground at a depth of one to two feet beneath the earth. This is the one night of the year when they're active in the water. The adults have lungs and need to get oxygen from the air. As they swim up to the surface, their motion is one of the most beautiful sights in the entire animal kingdom. The activity seen on this week's episode is occurring in vernal pools and shallow ponds throughout the entire Northeast. Just imagine how many thousands of salamanders that is. When we come back, we'll visit another location and check out the egg laying activity. You don't want to miss this. Coming up, our adventure is just beginning. A slew of predators tries to capture the eggs. How will they ever survive? 